Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Lutec Fusel channel. In this video we're gonna get started exploring the Boost C++ libraries. Yes, you heard correct, we're gonna take a look at Boost. Boost is a collection of C++ libraries that help you developing applications. Now if there is a problem out there that uh, requires solving a certain issue, well, you might be quite lucky that Boost solved this problem. Like Boost is a very, very big library collection. So if we take a look at Boost then we're gonna take a look at the libraries that are included in boost well if you take a look at this these are all the libraries that are in here every one of these entries is one c++ library now there are multiple libraries in here some of them are more relevant some of them are not even relevant at all for example there are libraries that are already solved in uh, modern uh, c++ versions for example there's like a library for move semantics for C++ versions that did not have move support back in these days. Like there's a lot of stuff that you might not need today or that there, there are some stuff that solve just one single issue. But if you have the issue, the library will solve it. However, there are also bigger libraries, bigger libraries that are more relevant, like a local library for localizations uh, or for state machines. There's also a library in here for uh, networking it's called ASIO, ASIO, however you want to call it. There's a lot of stuff in here, you can see it, I'm still scrolling and I have not yet uh, come to an end of the list yet, I'm just at S, there's T, there's a lot of stuff inside of, Bo uh, inside of Boost and there are even more libraries that are targeted towards Boost but not even in the normal library section at all. There's a lot of libraries in there. There are also even redundant libraries. I think there are multiple meta programming libraries. There are multiple um, regex libraries in here, like this expressive, and there's another regex library. There are multiple libraries for meta programming. There are multiple libraries that try to solve one certain issue. Uh, and most of the time you can even select, right? If you need a library that is more towards that direction, you take the one, and if you need some that's more towards another direction, you take the other one. Now, Boost is quite big, and this is also what I think many people kind of like puts away from Boost. And I am also, to be um, kind of like faithful with you, um, I wasn't even a big Boost user yet, but Boost has certain features in it that really, really make it shine, especially if you're trying to develop business-grade applications. If you're more inside this game development stuff, then Boost might not be as relevant. However, there are a few things that help you to kind of like get started with Boost and have things like that, especially also on the backend side of your game engine. If you have like a very backend of your game engine built on Boost without like all the graphics and the audio stuff, then Boost might be a good base platform for everything, also for like math and pre-processing on the editor side. Like Boost in the end, there is a lot of stuff in it. And this is also what uh, kind of like, uh, yeah, drives away people from not using Boost and yeah, but I, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to uh, Boost. I want to give you kind of like a bit of an overview of what we have inside of Boost and I want to show you how you can get Boost up and running easily because a big library, well, most of the time's problem. All right, there's like a button, get Boost. You can download it for Windows. It's a big zip file. If I start downloading it up here, there it is. Uh, it's downloading um, some some stuff. 203 megabytes, big library. I don't need that. We can uh, abort this here. Um, yeah, it is basically big. And big libraries are most of the time a bit hard to manage. And well, what we are going to do? Well, we're going to, of course, use Conan, our friendly C++ package manager. And you can already see popular recipes, Boost. There it is. Boost is a quite popular library. And of course, Conan has a package available for Boost. So Boost provides free peer-reviewed portable C++ source libraries, version 1.84.0. If we take a look at that, 1.84.0. This is the latest Boost version. It's inside of our Conan package package manager. So what do we need more than that? Well, we need to have a Conan project integrated. But good news, I have a template repository for that. It's located at github.com slash moxibyte slash moxpp. This is a template repository um, and this template repository is uh, 
meant for getting you kickstarted into uh, Conan and kind of like builds the framework for getting all of these details for boost. So now you're gonna see we can start and start a timer how fast we can get boost running on our machine. All right, so how do we get boost? Well, we use this template, create a new repository. I'm gonna create one to my personal account, boost tutorial. This is the name of the library uh, of the project that I wanna have for you so that we have a boost tutorial. This is not basically copying over all files and if we hit refresh, it should already be here. All right, so let's copy that content here and let's go to and let's go to uh, my folder in here. Let's go to uh, the Lytic Fusel directory. Let's open up a command and let's get cloned quickly into that little folder. This is gonna go fast. There's a boost tutorial. We can open this up with code and we are more or less uh, ready to go to start our project and add all our dependencies. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is of course add the dependency. Now, this is the Conan file. I don't wanna get too much into how to use Conan in this video series. Uh, the only thing that you need to know really is that you need to use this identifier and that you need to post this identifier in one of the self.requires call. Now, since, uh, uh, we gonna use boost and boost is a big library we need to actually configure a certain option actually what we uh, need to do is we need to set in this configure function itself dot options then in brackets and quotation marks boost and then we say with out fiber and we set without fiber to false. Now boost comes with a library for fibers. Now fibers are user mode threads and this is a very important feature. That's a feature that I wanna go over in this tutorial or at some later videos in this tutorial series. Of course, not everything today. Today we just wanna acquire boost and um, yeah, basically fibers are a good thing. However, there is a certain bug on windows uh, on shared libraries with fibers and this is why we need to explicitly say that we don't want to build without fibers. Now by default, uh, without fibers is set to false, but as soon as you are on Windows, then um, it disables that. So it sets without fibers to true, even through the problem only arises with shared libraries. But we just need to explicitly say without fibers false to make sure that fibers are enabled. Now, after that, I want to go uh, into a quick of settings here into mox.lua. I want to change this from mox to pp to boost tutorial so that we just have this a bit better named. And I want to have um, a prefix called boost. Uh, let's call it bt for boost tutorial. This is my macro prefix. And I'm going to go to a flat project hack architecture from a, a single project architecture, which also means that inside of that source folder, I need to create a subfolder. And I'm going to call this one dummy. This is just a dummy project that we gonna use today and what I want to do is I want to move these two files that I have in here then I want to quickly go in and change a bit on how this file works there's a lot of comments going on we don't need them for uh, uh, this tutorial series so I'm going to provide just the name of dummy the cpp version and mox console everything else we're not going to change it every project will look like that the main.cpp currently includes spd log we can remove that but I'm going to remove that later on in visual studio so now I basically just put it all of the source in the dummy subfolder Folder so that we have a flat project architecture with uh, multiple projects so that we can have multiple examples of the different boost libraries. I've adjusted this mox.lua file to reflect the uh, boost tutorial one, just simple customizations. And the most important one, I've set it up how my Conan build works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to run mox init. Mox init is now going to initialize the project. It's downloading premake, the build system, and then it should also go in and start uh, deploying the dependencies. Now you can see if we are working with boost so we require boost you can see that we also require uh, bz uh, bzip2 zlib and b2 now these are some common libraries that are required for boost to work it's zlib for compression and b2zip2 which i think requires b2 um, as a build requirement and uh, yeah basically these are required for um yeah, for for boost to work. So they basically just need this zip and um, zlib and b zip too. Now, what you can see is that we get a lot of outputs and my output is actually already done. You can see that I have a done message down here and I'm back at a console. Um, if you are doing this the first time on your machine, this might take quite more time to run that command because boost first needs to be compiled. If we scroll up a bit, we can actually see the configuration of boost and how it is compiled. No, we don't see it because it's already compiled and it's not doing it and it's reusing that. But in the end, um, 
um, what it's going to do, you're going to see a bit of outputs and then you're basically going to report which libraries are going to be built and then the comment line might seem to be stuck. But the comment line is not stuck, it just takes quite a lot of time until boost is compiled. This is also doing this twice because you're going to have a debug build and you're going to have a release build. But if you wait a bit, so be patient, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever you drink and yeah, just wait until it finishes. It will finish. It should not have a problem. If it has a problem, you might need to clean up your Conan dependencies. And um, yeah, then you should be done and ready to use uh, Conan, uh, boost with Conan. Now, all of these warnings, just ignore them. They are currently um, just something that indicates uh, for the, the Conan authors of the uh, boost libraries or they maintain the Conan recipes, they just tell them that um, they need to update their recipes. It's not something that we are really too um, concerned about. Now, to verify that boost has been successfully installed, you can take a look at the left under the dependency folder. You should see a lot of files in here. And there is also this full deploy folder. And under this full deploy folder host, you should have a folder boost with the current version and then debug and release. And if you take a look at this release, for example, in this case, x 64 you can see that we have include lib and licenses. If you take a look at the licenses, there are the licenses. If you take a look at lib, you're going to have all the compiled uh, libraries available. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, actually like uh, libboost, stack trace, no orb, win, uh, debug, cached, libboost system. There's a lot of libraries which indicates that we have a successful compile. And also if you're taking a look at the include folder, you should have a lot of folders, a lot of folders to include them. And every folder is basically one boost library. There might be a few ones missing. There are a few libraries that are not included by default with boost. If we are later getting to them, uh, I'm going to show you how to later integrate them. Now, just to check it, if you take a look at UUID, well, UUID.HPP, if we close the console, we can actually see the boost header. We can actually see all of the uh, stuff that's required for the compiler. You can see how a UUID is defined. Uh, it's a struct, so you can see that there's uh, some stuff going on and yeah, some variants and basically what you can see is maybe even the implementation of that because many boost libraries are header only. What this is, it's just, a it's just a check, right? Everything in here, it's just that you know where Boost now is, where Boost is now located, where it has been deployed inside of your folder. But what you are really uh, interested about is the Boost Tutorial.sln, which is the Visual Studio solution. You can open this by either uh, opening up a terminal and then entering like Boost Tutorial.sln, which will open up the solution. Or you can, of course, also double click with that in a normal Windows Explorer. Now, my Boost Tutorial has opened up on a different monitor there it is and if you take a look at this in this solution you should have now the dummy project and if you are looking at the files you have a build.lua of course let's me maybe, maybe zoom a bit uh, in so that you can actually see it uh what you have let's maybe do 250 i think for youtube you have a build.lua and you have a main.cpp and in the main.cpp you can see that we have a lot of errors because well by default this template he works with spd log spd log is not included so let's remove it and now just to check that everything is working you can press f5 and it should compile and it should do nothing which is exactly what is meant to be well uh, that's already everything that i wanted to do in today's video i just wanted to you to introduce how you can get boost installed now i just want to show you a quick example how you can use boost so if we go to boost log and then i think it's called trivial.hpp uh, you can do boost um log trivial there's something boost log trivial info and you can do a quick hello uh, boost with boost logging well because we have to boost uh, the whole boost ecosystem boost logging should work so boost log trivial with info and if I take a look at this yeah you can see that we are getting a console output we're getting this with the year with the time we get the, I think this is I think the thread ID uh, which we could see I think uh, the thread um, 0x4424 uh, 43 Maybe it's not the thread. I don't know. Maybe it's a process. Huh. I don't know. I don't know what ID this is. We would need to take a look at the actual documentation of uh, boost logging, which is, of course, not the scope of today's video. But yeah, you can see that we have an info message, hello boost. And if we go like, I think error should also be a log level, just to trivially check this. 
well, error also works. It's not nicely color highlighted how SPD log is doing that. I personally think that I do rather like SPD log than boost logging, but boost logging has certain advantages and it's integrated with the ecosystem. So yeah. Also, if you would now want to use ASIO, you could also use boost ASIO.hpp and you go to something like boost uh, ASIO IO context CTX and you could start network operations with boost and using boost bind and using all of the fancy boost features that are available. Right? Boost is integrated. You can see it works. I can run it. It should compile without issues also with the ASIO integrated and we basically now have offloaded a lot of stuff onto our machine. But well, that's the whole idea. You get boost, this is your ecosystem, and you use this boost ecosystem, you use this boost ecosystem to build applications. And boost has a, quite a lot of features available that doesn't even require you to go and add some external dependencies like program arguments, logging, localization, network IO, web servers, and there's a lot of stuff already integrated into boost. So you can actually get quite far, especially for business grade applications by just using boost. And yeah, that's it. We have boost available on our machine. Uh, let me maybe quickly commit this and call this one something like add, uh, added boost. So we now added a boost to our uh, repository. And well, that's it for today's video. In the next video, we're going to start. We're going to go to boost. We're going to go to libraries. And we're going to try to work through the libraries from start to finish. This seems like something big to uh, achieve. But well, yeah, it might be. But we're going to, of course, also skip some of these. But I want to give you an overview, a short overview. I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. This is kind of like a continuation of the C++ library series, but now actually trimmed to the use of Boost. And I want to show you how Boost works and how you can get with just a bit of integration work, how we have done it here, quite a lot of uh, ecosystem in here. And since we are using Conan, adding <laughs> more libraries isn't too big of a deal. <laughs> okay, so thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye.